you know, Jim seems to be always just a few steps ahead of you in terms of the next step of, of life, uh, you know, uh, through marriage and through fatherhood. Like, mm -hmm. you got married on TV first. And yeah, you got yeah, married. Yeah. You had kids on TV. Now, yeah. you know, I don't, you don't have kids yet, but I'm sure that time's I coming four. up. I have four. Um, is it odd to go through life, like, uh, you know, with these changes that happen first as a character and then do you in real life? It is so bizarre. You know, I never really thought about it while we were shooting sort of the lead up and, <clears throat> and, and uh, you know, the unrequited love stuff. I definitely could connect to that because there were, I, <clears throat> I wasn't the most successful in love as far as like, uh, you know, high school and college and stuff. I was always the kid who just like adored a girl and they'd be like, you are such a good friend. Sign my yearbook. And I was like, <laughs> you got it. And it was like hearts and like, hopefully we'll be- love Yeah, exactly, your friend. exactly. We'll be friends forever. Um, you give the best hugs, shut up. <laughs> um, so to me, the unrequited love thing was really uh, easily understandable. <clears throat> but then, you know, after meeting Emily and having all that be so exciting and so different, a whole new world for me, then the show locked into this very weird sort of parallel universe thing. And I'll never forget giving the um, rehearsal dinner speech in the show where I say how much I love this girl, like I definitely got choked up because it was just all sort of like smashing into each other at the same time because at the time I knew I was gonna propose to Emily but the world didn't. So I was like doing this rehearsal speech and being like, eh, and my brain was like, can I just get a five second timeout? And so that was really exciting. And then to get married, we had already been engaged and so when we got married on the show, it was really like, I think like six or five months ahead of me actually getting married, which was totally weird and bizarre because I think, you know, looking out at your family of these people who, you know, you just immediately think, not negatively, but you immediately think like, this is an era of my life and it will, you know, go. so you have the same emotional connection looking out or a similar emotional connection as you do looking out to your family and friends when you get married of like, oh my God, these people mean the world. To me. And it's just this existential sort of crack that happened. Except you get to do it over and over yes. until you get it right. Yes. And, and, you, it, and you were at my wedding. You saw how much of an existential <laughs> crack it was. I did not hold it together. Did you feel like you need, wanted writers for the actual rehearsal speech? The, oh my the God. rehearsal dinner I mean, that's another funny thing is they, maybe they took some of the best lines that you then couldn't oh, use. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I wish I could have looked to camera on my wedding day. But um, no, I mean, it was one of those things where it just you, you have gone through this extremely romantic experience and you're just dying to hope that your real life experience will be half as good, just half as good. To continue the off-camera experience, visit offcamera.com. Get full access to additional content, podcasts, and the off-camera magazine. Because the best conversations happen off-camera.